right. Good morning. Good afternoon or, or even good evening. Doesn't really matter because we're podcasting. So you can pretty much listen to this anytime you want. If you're on the road, if you're uh, just hanging out, you can listen to this podcast no matter where you're at. And get the latest and greatest on industrial news, the professionals that make it happen, and uh, just all around a lot of uh, good information out there for all of those who are in the industrial space. I've had a great week. This particular week included a visit to Lake Charles for the LCIA conference and met a lot of great uh, uh, professionals out there who are proud about their ca- uh, craft and what they do. As well as I had an interview with a gentleman by the name of uh, Brad McKee. Now, Brad is the founder of the Disposable Hero Project. And uh, you're going to like that interview because he is uh, quite the passionate guy. So I appreciate you guys joining us. And I hope that you learn a little bit from this particular program. And uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you for joining Yeah, it's great. It's great to have a podcast, and uh, you can listen to anywhere. I listen to podcasts all the time. I continue to learn, and that's what brought me up to this uh, sort of an idea. It's called uh, Industrial Gym. You know, you go to the gym, you you sit there and work out because, well, you you got to. You eat well, and you do all of that good stuff, and you need to be able to also feed your mind with uh, industrial information that is current which is trending, which is relevant to your business, and you never stop learning. And so I've, uh, I'm working on putting together a program called the Industrial Gym, and hopefully it will be launched soon, but I wanted to give you a heads up. As well as uh, looking at some Industrial Mastermind program, which is uh, uh, I'm looking for people who are truly skilled in their craft, in their industrial craft, and I have a conversation specifically about uh, where the industry is going, what are the trends that are taking place, and be able to share that with all the listeners of the uh, Industrial Talk uh, podcast. And, and once again, welcome. I'd like to also thank the sponsors of this particular podcast, Industrial Talk Podcast, and that's uh, Leaf Services, LLC. If you have any labor issues, concerns, or just need capable individuals uh, to fulfill a project, uh, consider Leaf Services because they'll, they'll bring it to you. Pico Group, any projects no, no, uh, not too big or too small, they got incredible talent within that organization, and uh, please look them up too as well. And the last but not least, but uh, if you have any water projects like docks and anything associated with uh, projects like that, Cosmia Marine, I've worked with them in the past many times, and they deliver on what they promise. So they're really very, very capable. All right, so this week, I was able to go to the LCIA event in Lake Charles and, and met with a lot of people, a lot of interesting tech out there now in the industrial space, a lot of people who are servicing that uh, area. And I just want to let you know that that, uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming down the turnpike and and in the industrial space. And boy, it was on display at that particular event. Hopefully, if I coerce the people that I've spoken to a number of times, that they'll be able to join us on the Industrial Talk podcast and be able to share with you some of the great stuff that they're dealing with right now. Also, once again, I alluded to it, Brad McKee. Now, I want to make sure you understand this gentleman here. Brad McKee is the interview that I have uh, coming up, and he was in the Marines. He was a scout. He was a sniper. He's a young guy in his mid-30s who has a passion for helping vets, and at this, uh, at the Industrial Talk sh- uh, Podcast, we also like to help vets as much as we possibly can. And so our conversation sort of revolved around how the – Disposable Hero Project is helping vets today. And what's interesting is I had the conversation, I would, I would mention Disposable Heroes, and just sort of the, the name alone is, 
is sort of got that negative connotation to it. But once you hear Brad talk about why the 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 name Disposable Heroes comes from, you realize that the individuals that have given their lives and, and who sacrifice so much fall into that category, and it makes complete and utter sense. And so, anyway, it was a great conversation. And I highly encourage you to go on out to, and we'll, you'll get plenty of information on, on how to contact Mr. Brad. And he also is an owner of one, a uh, fabrication shop. And it's a great, inspiring story of how he decided that he wanted to be in the fabrication business, and he was self-taught. And if there's anything that we know about the industrial space, it's it's got a lot of people who are passionate about what they do and how they strive to be the best that they can be. And they'll do anything they can to be able to learn from the best. And so Brad is just the living image of being able to do that. Um as a fabricator and then finally because of his military background he has uh, um, a crossfit gym and that's where we had the interview and uh take it from me it's not for the faint of heart but it's full of steel and iron and it's uh it's 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 for those tough guys and uh ladies who who know how to (laughs) bring it baby so it, it was wonderful talking to him and seeing that Jim. And uh, anyway, that'll be coming up in just a few minutes. Once again, I thank you very much for being here. And uh, you'll be hearing more about the Industrial Gym as well as the Industrial Mastermind because I certainly need help and I would love to be able to talk to you a little bit about it. So without further ado, here's my interview with uh, Brad McKee owner of a CrossFit gym, but founder of the Disposable Heroes Project. All right, I'm here with uh, uh, Mr. Brad McKee, uh, owner of multiple businesses, plus a a nonprofit organization called Disposable Hero. Uh, He also owns Hammond CrossFit. And then he also owns a fabrication shop. What's the name of that fabrication shop? Steel Gun Fabrication. Steel Gun. Wow. That's a, that's a fantastic name. I like that. Um, the reason I'm, I'm here to talk to Mr. Mr. Brad here is because of his uh, nonprofit affiliation with, uh, and, and, well, he propped it up with Disposable Heroes. Brad, tell me a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so the Disposable Heroes Project is a nonprofit 501c3 organization uh, that me and two buddies started um, in 2009 um, after I got out the Marine Corps. Uh, and our goal was just to uh, help the guys um, that are doing so much for us, uh, make sure they're you know, never without needed assistance. And, um, and that's been our goal from day one. Uh, we're not too specific as far as exactly what we do because we never wanted uh, someone in need to uh, contact us and, and us have to turn them away. Um, so we've done uh, all kinds of things. Uh, we, we've buried veterans that didn't have money uh, to, 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 to bury uh, their family to bury them. Um, we have fully furnished a vet's house. We've bought a hand pedal bike for a double amputee. We've sent um, you know a, a blind vet on a Disney cruise with him and his family. Um, so there's an array of things we've done. So uh, when we get those requests in, we, we, we vet them. We make sure they're legit. We make sure they're good. They check out. And then if they do, uh, we do anything we can to, to help these guys out. And, and that's active duty military. Um, that's veterans and also the family of the fallen. The, the the name disposable hero it's uh, i've had a number of conversations with people uh in my passing and i said yeah i'm going to be talking to, to to brad mckee he's uh, the founder of disposable hero and then they of course they go about and say well what does that mean and and of course i just sit there with a you know dumbfounded look on my face tell me a little bit about disposable hero the name itself yeah so just just what you said that's one of the reasons uh we we did name it the disposable heroes because you are going to get that question that is what is that and 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 if it's a conversation starter and 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 if you give me the time to explain what i do and what we do um there's a good chance that you might want to get involved or or, or whatnot but as far as the meaning goes uh, it's a two-part meaning the first and and probably the most important or not the most important but 
uh, a very important reason is I actually served with a bunch of guys that actually had uh, the words disposable hero tattooed on their chest. And, and to them, um, it, it didn't matter if the people back home forgot what we were doing. Um, it didn't matter if they considered us just a number. It didn't matter if they forgot about us. Um, because when they did, um, to them, you know, they became disposable. Um, but they were still willing to do the job. They were still willing to serve. They were still willing to, uh, you know, put that foot across the line and say, you know, hey, I'm a blank check to the government. And, um, and, and that was their meaning behind it. So it was a strong meaning. It was kind of their mindset of what they were doing over there. Um, and then for us as a project, we have to make sure our veterans and our active duty military and the family of the fallen don't become disposable. And, and the way they become disposable is by forgetting about them, considering them just a number. Um, as the wars uh, kind of leave us, uh, or the mo two most recent wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, as they kind of leave us, um, you know, there's more and more people forgetting about, you know, what our veterans did and what they went through and, and, and really what they're dealing with now. So we've got to make sure our troops don't come to become disposable. Um, and the way we do that is by taking care of them. The, um, one of the sponsors with, um, industrial talk is leave services and leave services is committed to, uh, hiring as many veterans as they possibly can, uh, for industrial work, of course. Uh, are you working with any companies or any organizations that uh, try to move many of the vets into a, a meaningful or, or employment situation? Uh, we're not working, working with anybody currently right now. Um, most of our stuff is just individual vets or their family or some kind of third party contacting us. Um, like this morning, you know, got an email that said, hey, um, there's this vet. He's 100 um, percent, you know, diagnosed with PT PTSD um, by the VA. Um, he because of that, he can't ha he can't get a job because of his symptoms that he deals with. So he's falling back on his bills. Um, so they ask us, hey, you know, how can you guys help out? And, and that's mostly what we get is, is that case right there or, or a case similar to it. Um, so we're not working closely with any other group right now. Um, you know, obviously sometimes we get, um, the occasional request that says, Hey, I'm a veteran. Do you know somewhere where I can get hired? Or do you know a group that does that? Um, and we'll definitely reach out and, and try to help those guys out. Well, I know the sponsor at uh, leaf services would be more than happy to help you with that particular endeavor. Now, um, Brad, you're, you're somewhat humble in a sense, but, uh, everyone out there, he, uh, served for four years and, uh, came out of the service in around 2008. He was a uh, Marine Corps scout and sniper, which is uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, your, your time in, in, in the Marine Corps, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it, it was a good time. I was young. I'm 32 now. Uh, I was uh, still young. <laughs> exactly. I agree with that. Um, <laughs> but uh, compared to when I joined, I was 19. And, uh, you know, obviously I've learned a lot over those years, you know, so I joined basically as a kid. Um, grew up fast and, uh, you know, enjoyed my time, you know. Why, why did you join? What was your reason behind that? Yeah, well, I was actually in college at the time. Um, I was 18 years old, just got out of high school. Uh, the high school that I went to, you know, it was a, it was a Catholic private school, and, and it just wasn't the thing to do to serve the military coming out, uh, you know, of a school like that. It was just, you know, I guess, you know, as a young kid, you do things that are cool and trendy, and that just wasn't the trendy thing. Um, but, you know, once I got out of that, uh, you know, setting environment and, and started making choices on my own, as any young adult would, uh, you know, I was seeing these guys on TV, you know, in 2003, the year that I graduated, uh, serving in Iraq when we first invaded. And, uh, you know, they were 17, 18, 19. And, and I just basically asked myself, you know, what are they doing over there um, while I'm over here sitting in a college classroom? And to me, it just didn't make sense. And, uh, you know, again, like you said, I'm still young at 32. I was definitely young at 19, so I had plenty of time on my hand, and uh, I wanted to do it. So I walked down to the recruiting station. Uh, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing, didn't tell the girl that I was dating of five years, didn't tell my mom, my family, my friends, because I knew it was a decision that I had to make for myself, and I knew it was the first big boy decision I was going to make, and it was going to be the right one. And I uh, walked in the recruiting station and said, hey, look, I want to sign up. I want to be infantry, and I want to serve active duty. And they tried to take out their leadership cards and do this and do that and figure out what job I was made for, try to convince me to be a computer analyst and this and that. Because I was in college, I said, look, you're wasting your time. I'm about to leave. So either sign me up now or, you know, I'll go next door. 
So it, it was it was one of the best decisions I've ever made, and, and it was to me it was the foundation of who I am today, um, and, and how I operate today. Thank you. That that's an incredible story, and I really appreciate your service. Most down. Well, what did your mom think? I have to ask that because I know as a parent, and my son would come back and say, "Hey, Dad, this is what I did." I'm not sure how I would uh, react. But how did your mom react? Yeah, so I mean, my mom, you know, basically raised us. Uh, you know, I was in a divorce household, so we spent most of the time with my mom. She was emotional. Um, I mean, at the time, like I said, we just had invaded in Iraq, and that's one of the reasons I didn't go in any, in, into any family or friends because, you know, uh, there's not too many logical people that are going to tell you, yeah, go serve. You know, we're at war right now. We just invaded. To, to, you know, right now is a great time to serve. Um, you know, uh, possibly a family member with prior military service. But besides that, you're not going to get it. So I knew I was going to be talked out of the decision if I went before. So she cried for about a week, you know, once I told her. But I knew since I already had made the decision, went down to MEPS, signed in, you know, raised the right hand and everything like that. I knew her only option after the emotional part was to support me. And, and she went from crying for a week straight to becoming my, my biggest supporter while I was in the military. So I thank her you know, for that and, and her support and her appreciation for what I did. And it, it, it meant a lot while I was in. Well, everybody, anybody that's out there, um, what a wonderful uh, nonprofit. What, uh, what an incredible purpose that you are serving for the vets. And I, um, at Industrial Talk, we like to really support the vets in any way, shape possible. How can people who are listening get in contact with you regarding help for the vets i mean the, the easiest way is to, to get on the website uh, dhproject.org uh is the easiest way my, my email is on there um you know i check all the email uh, uh personally um and that's the easiest way to get in contact we have a contact form on there you, or you can just email either one we also have a cell phone on, uh, on there that we take text through um so any of those kind of ways um are, are just fine we have a facebook page we have an instagram we have a twitter you know, one of those ways are going to get to us. Uh, so if you've got a helping hand and, and you're ready to get involved, uh, we're, we're definitely ready to take your help. Now, you're out of Hammond, uh, Louisiana, but, but I would imagine that uh, this is without bounds. So uh, if somebody is in Texas, Alabama, Chicago, wherever, this DH Projects, is it S or T at the end? Just project. Yeah, and the website dhproject.org. Dot org. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing. Can your your reach be go beyond the boundaries of Hammond? Yeah, we don't have boundaries to our to our project. I mean, we we've shipped our shirts to all fifty states in thirteen different countries. Um, we've helped out veterans in multiple different states um, in the United States. So uh, it doesn't matter where they're at. That that doesn't make a difference for us. Um, and we can usually act pretty quick. Uh, we're not bound by a bunch of red tape. Um, how you might see some other projects. We do have a functioning board um, of uh, five members. Um, so literally, you know, we have a way that we communicate online, um, even though we're all from this same town. Uh, we do have our, you know, um, bi-monthly board meetings. But besides that, we can get on our communication uh, website that we communicate with and literally take a vote within 10 minutes. Um, explain the story. Sometimes I download a video. Sometimes I might just throw out a question. They might throw out questions and it's done. Within 10 minutes, we can have money to somebody. We can have assistance. We can contact people. So we're pretty quick in what we do as well. Oh, that's important because time is really of the essence with many of these individuals that are in need of help. Okay, we're going to be taking a break right now. On the other side, we're going to talk a little bit about more his uh, his fabrication and uh, capabilities. And of course, we're gonna joke a little bit about uh, CrossFit and, and how challenging that is. Remember, let's go on out there to dhproject.org and, and, and really help these vets and commit to uh, Mr. Brad's purpose of helping these vets uh, you know, live life. I appreciate it and, and thank you on that. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Hi, this is Scott McKenzie with Industrial Talk. I like to learn and I like to have fun. And when I can put them both together, learning and having fun, well, that's a match made in heaven. That's why I put together a drawing for a Louisiana fish excursion as well as the 2018 Mardi Gras once-in-a-lifetime event. 
You can find more about this information, about this uh, two wonderful opportunities at the Industrial Talk website at industrialtalk.com. Okay, here we are. We're uh, back with uh, Mr. Brad. And once again, I want to just uh, remind you to go out to dhproject.org, help our vets. And if uh, anybody needs help, uh, a veteran needs help in finding work, uh, also contact him. I'm sure he can uh, definitely contact Leaf Services to see if there's any other opportunities there. Um, Brad, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, your fabrication capabilities. Uh, right next to your CrossFit, which is we're we're in an office right now at the CrossFit uh, location, and I'm out. I'm looking out at uh, um, a tremendous amount of steel and uh, straps and stuff like that, and it's a pretty impressive location. But you've got your fabrication shop right next door, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, your CrossFit. But right now, I'd like to. Tell me, tell me, how'd you get into fabrication and why that's so important? Yeah, it was an inter inter interesting um, way that I got into uh, fabrication. Um, you know, coming out the Marine Corps, uh, you know, and this goes back to to the nonprofit that I run too. You know, there's always guys coming back from combat that are trying to deal with it in, in some kind of different way. Um, some people turn to drugs, alcohol. Some people turn to high adrenaline activities. You know, um, some people might turn to golf. Um, for me, you know, I, I knew the adrenaline rush that I experienced in combat was impossible to match back on stateside um, and the civilian side of things. But, I, you know, I needed or I thought I needed something to to at least uh, get close to it. And uh, because that's a big void when people come back, you know, when they see things they see over there, when they experience the, the adrenaline rush of basically, you know, hunting another human being, it, it's hard to match that adrenaline rush and um so you know for the first year year and a half when i came back i was trying to find exactly what that was uh never found it um and you know one thing leads to another sometimes in life and for me i actually sold my 308 sniper rifle that i had custom made um while i was in the marine corps i actually sold that to buy my first welder um you know a little miller miller 211 and um and that's where it all started for me about four years ago um and for me i've always been a type of person that liked to do just the man's man type of stuff you know so um i like to be able to do things with my hands i like to be able to fix things um i don't like to depend on a lot of other people i don't like to hire a bunch of other people to do everything i need to do um so what's you know what's more manly than you know some heavy equipment and welding you know and uh steel exactly <laughs> Um, so that's kind of how I got into it. I sold that sniper rifle, uh, picked up my first welder. Um, you know, e even before that, hopped on YouTube, um, read books for about six months prior to that, and, and just found like something like this was going to be something I really enjoyed. And, and now, besides CrossFit and my family, welding and fabrication has become a passion of mine. And, and uh, I just love my time in the shop. So, and this is just so fascinating because uh, uh, many of the people who listen to this program are are looking for guidance and direction in what they want to do from an industrial perspective, welding, maintenance, E&I, whatever that might be. And let's say I have a desire to, to, to pursue some sort of welding fabrication, I don't know, a profession. What do you recommend for those young pups out there that are looking for some uh, answers? Oh, I mean, if you're young and you have time and, 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 and you have chances to take while you're young before you have a family and two and three kids to take care of and bills and responsibility, I, I would get out into as many different environments as you can to see what they're about. You know, I, I was actually just um, I had two high school kids that were actually just on a job with me last week on an install of some some hand railings at a business. And uh, you, 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 the job site was about 45 minutes away. So we had good time to talk on the way back. And I was just telling those guys, you know, uh, about my first job that I had at Smitty's Oil Supply in Roseland. Um, and, you know, I worked from, I was clocking in at 4 o'clock in the morning. I was leaving at 7 in the evening. And I did that for the whole summer, saved up good money. Um, but what it taught me was it taught me what I didn't want to do, right? You know, so there's a lot of things that you can get your hands into to figure out exactly what it is. 
Um, because usually what it says on paper is not what it is in, in real life experience. So as a younger pub, I would get into as many different fields of welding or fabrication that you think you're going to like or want to do. Um, you know, you have to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to say, hey, look, I'll come help you out. You don't have to pay me. I'll sweep the floors and just be an ear to that, that older person, that salt dog that's in there um, and, and just take in as much as you can. Because from there, I think you're going to have opportunity and I think you're going to have somebody that kind of guides you on, on what you want to do. Who's your salt dog? My salt dog, it's, you know, like I said, we, you know, we talk about millennials and, and this new generation in welding. Um, it's been people on Instagram that, that, you know, when I first started, I reached out um, to a guy that was in Mississippi because I knew I could reach out to somebody. And that's another piece of advice I would give, you know, with social media, with you being young, reach out to people that you think are going to help you. Now you might reach out to 10 and you might only get a response from two, but it's a game of numbers. You know, if you reach out to 30, you're going to have five that respond, you know, and those five, just take them and run with them. And, you know, I contacted the first guy when I was younger, when I wanted to get into welding and fabrication, and I actually offered him at a hundred dollars a month. I said, Hey man, look, I want to do this. I know I want to do it, but I don't have the opportunity to go work in a shop under someone and learn for years. So I need to learn on my own. I need to learn quick. Um, and I want to enjoy it and do the right things and not mess up with people's jobs, you know, for the small stuff that I was doing. And I said, look, I'll pay you a hundred dollars a month through PayPal just if you provide me with the opportunity to where I can just call you at any time, um, ask you any questions, and, and you can answer them. And if you think it gets to, to, to be too many questions, um, I'll pay you even more. And he said, look, man, don't worry about your money. I don't need your money. Ask any questions that you want. And that's been kind of my thing is if I don't know something, I'll go out and seek the advice that I need to get, and I'll, I'll get the right answer. And, again, to do that, you have to be humble. You have to admit that you don't know. And you have to go get the right answer. So, yeah, reach out, you know, because the, the advice and the help is out there. Where before this social media generation, if you weren't in someone's shop right under them, y you had nowhere to go. Maybe a library at most, but if you couldn't read and pick up pretty well without actually seeing it or hearing it, probably wasn't going to happen. Yeah, that's inspiring. I, 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 man, I can't wait for my son to hear this. This is really important. Um, well, that that is fantastic, and I know that um, you've got, I think you got an Instagram uh, site for your fabrication. So if anybody wants to get a hold of you or follow you or look at your uh, projects that are going on, w w how would they do that? Yeah, just uh, search on Instagram, search uh, Steel S T E E L uh, underscore Gun G U N underscore Fab Steel Gun Fab. Um, well, it's it's Steel underscore. Gun, gun underscore, underscore fab fab yeah, still, F -A -B. yeah still gun fab um and all my projects will come up that's where i post you know sometimes i'm on site welding at night or in the middle of the day or whatever um so yeah you can kind of see what i do there and uh um i do everything custom so you know i'm not in production so i'm not doing the same thing over and over again every project's new and every project is interesting and i learn something different on every single project that i do so um, to me, it's fun. I, I enjoy it. I have a passion for doing it. Um, I, I like going in the shop every single day. It's not something I'm forced to do, and, and I think that's where you get the most out of it. So it's steel, S-T-E-E-L, underscore, gun, G-U-N, underscored, fab, F-A-B, on Instagram. All right, let's talk a little bit of uh, CrossFit, which is really interesting because if, if I remember correctly, we were talking about uh, – you starting this business about eight years ago, ish. Yeah, about eight years ago, in two thousand nine, I started officially in uh, two thousand ten. But two thousand nine is when I started CrossFit Hammond. Now, why? I mean, yeah. So when I got, I mean, uh, you know, at that time, 2000, 2008, 2009, CrossFit was pretty, uh, pretty new um, to the scene. It started in California back in two thousand two, um, and. You know, for me, when I was getting out of the military, a lot of people were doing CrossFit. Um, and um, why, why, why the military doing CrossFit? What was yeah, the no doubt. So, so, so CrossFit prepares you for the unknown and un unknowable. And um, and in the military, that's exactly what it is. You, you don't know what you're about to face. You you don't know what challenge is going to come up. Um, so you have to prepare for all of them. Um, you can't just be strong because um, if you can squat 500 pounds and bench 500 pounds. Um, but you've got to go on a 10 mile trek to get somewhere. Um, that may help you out a little bit, but you're probably going to need a little bit in the cardiovascular, respiratory endurance uh, area. 
And so CrossFit takes 10 fundamental skills and they think you need to be versatile in all 10 of them to be an all around fit person versus specializing in, in one of those areas. The uh, location, of course, is Hammond, or no, CrossFitHammond.com. And this is in Hammond, Louisiana. And like I said, it's, it's, a, it's pretty impressive what he's got here. And I think uh, what's, what is really, really important for me to, uh, to point out is that how you were sort of at the cutting edge. Because right now, CrossFit is pretty much everywhere. And uh, it's got a, got a big following. And, of course, you can find anything out on on the social platform so yeah no doubt I mean so we started a while back there was nobody really in the area kind of new um you know but like I said now it's on ESPN it was on CBS Sports um they just recently had the CrossFit Games um that they crowned two uh, you know a woman uh, a man and also a team the fittest in the world um so yeah it's kind of everywhere now but you know the biggest thing that separates CrossFit from anything else or any other gym or anything like that is the community you know these guys are my family they're my friends um, you know, uh, it, it's a very positive environment. Uh, we're working together for uh, some of the same common goals, and it's just a totally different experience than anything else you'll do. The, um, we're going to have to take a break right now, uh, Brad, and then on the other side, we're going to wrap it all up. But uh, uh, the Hammond CrossFit, and like I said, or the CrossFit Hammond, fantastic uh, place, and uh, we're going to get some more information on that on the other side. Hey, once again, this is Scott McKenzie with Industrial Talk. If you like what you're listening to, please feel free to sign up for the free podcast as well as the blogs. I'll try to keep it all relevant to your business and uh, hopefully be able to provide some insight into what we do at Industrial Talk and what you do as a professional. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Well, I've just truly enjoyed um, this opportunity, Brad, to be with you. I thank you very much, really, for taking time out of your busy schedule. You've got a lot of irons in the fire. You're doing a lot of great things, which I'm just I'm I'm honored to know you, and I'm I'm and I just highly recommend that people listening, please go out to. That disposable hero project uh, location, which is at dhproject.org. See what you can do to help. Um, the men and women have sacrificed so much for for our freedoms, and they deserve our very best. Once again, dhproject.org. Get a hold of Brad there, or follow him on Instagram at steel s t e e l underscore gun underscore fab f-a-b and that's on instagram and if you find yourself roaming around hammond louisiana and you need a place to really start to sweat and hurt yourself and and i'm sure it's a good hurt don't get me get me wrong uh go to uh, crossfithammond.com great facility and uh he'll get he'll put you in the right direction to get back into shape so, Brad, thank you once again. I know you're busy, and I thank you very much for this opportunity. You're an inspiration, and I uh, really, you know, make me proud. No, I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me on, and, uh, you know, best of luck to everybody that's, that's listening in, in your endeavors. Hey, thank you very much. That was Mr. Brad McKee. Excellent uh, interview. A lot of great information. And it just was an honor to be able to have an opportunity to uh, interview him. If you want more information about the Industrial Talk podcast, just go to industrialtalk.com. If you're interested in being interviewed, I'd be happy to talk to you about that and see what we can do to promote you, your product, what you do, your company. It's all fun for me. Hopefully it's fun for you. So once again, go on out to industrialtalk.com and please look into the sponsors of the show. And that's in uh, Leaf Services, LLC, Piku Group, and Kostmeyer Marine. They'll set you up right. Thank you very much and have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week.